Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for episode number four? Four, yes, four. Of our, how am I losing count already? We're four episodes in. Of our ECW series, rebooking ECW. And uh, yeah, we're here in the main hub. Um, quick question for you guys. We, we obviously have a different question of the episode that you'll see when we head into these two shows as we build towards hostile city showdown but i just want to check with you guys how much transparency do you want to see in this series so um for any of you guys that saw my AEW series it was very much keep my cards close to my chest only really show you the shows not show you um you know who we're signing what we're planning on doing things like that our local to global is a little bit more flexible in the if we've signed someone new that's not like a crazy like whoa we've signed someone new then i'll show you but if there's like someone that i think is a, a bigger name then i'll definitely you know try and hide it and make it more of a whoa so yeah what do you guys want to see from this because um like, i'll just show you for example i'm not gonna tell you who i'm signing but let's just jump here and then let's just uh ba -ba -ba -ba, work a type let's go shortlisted apply i got quite a long shortlist as you can see and um, there's a number of names here that are unemployed. So you've got like Adam Copeland here. So like Adam Pierce. Um, I mean, big Guido's there in case you want to bring him back. But good old little Guido. Um, oh, it's Seymour we've signed. So we can remove him. Uh, but hold on. Let's just... So you've got Chris Harris. James Storm is somewhere further down. So, you know, that's another team. Christian Cage. Christopher Daniels. Like, we've got some big old names in here um that i'm interested in bringing in at some point actually we brought harley racing as well remove for example um the the main ones i'm looking at is matt and jeff hardy currently unemployed i want to pick them up as soon as and but i don't have any plans for them i'd say over the next month two months because i've kind of mentally and physically booked um up until post cyber slam so you know i'm kind of just thinking do I bring them in now, just have them sit there, or do I wait and bide my time? But the trouble is, if I bring them in now, they're going to sit here. As you can see, Todd Gordon has left ECW. He was on a PPA. I'm never going to use him on screen, so he's gone. So, like, I could start an episode, and it'll be like, Jeff and Matt Hardy have signed, or something like that. And that's obviously spoiling that they're going to be appearing soon. I mean, I know I've kind of spoiled it now, that they probably will be appearing soon, but... I don't know. Let me know. I'm not going to sign anyone until I'd say at least post Hostile City Showdown uh, or anyone new. But as you can see, we've got a long old short list. A couple of them I definitely want to bring in. I want to bolster the roster a little bit because one thing I found is I've got a lot of guys that I don't want losing week in, week out because, you know, a loss harms popularity. I'm trying to grow these guys. But then I can't have the same people losing every week as well. So yeah, I'm trying to keep it as even as possible, but I am finding that there's the same group of like four or five wrestlers that I'm like, oh yeah, they can eat a loss. And then I'm like, oh wait, no, they ate a loss in the last show. So yeah, I'm keen to make my roster a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not really much else to say. Um, didn't receive any new mail. Uh, just a summary of our last shows, nothing new. We can take a look at what, you know, Raw did in their most recent episode. So they had uh, Intercontinental Championship. The Rock went over Steve Blackman. Actually, let's look at it like this. It's much nicer. Uh, yeah, Triple H got the win there. A nice little segment here. Some tag teams. Tag team title matches. You know, they're throwing the title matches on Raw just like, because why not? Owen Hart getting the win over Goldust in that weird gimmick that he had back in day. Yeah, so that's what... Uh, WWF are up to WCW, um, probably a little bit better in my opinion. Benoit, Bobby Eaton, Benoit and Raven, uh, Ultimo Dragon defeating Buff Bagwell. You love to see it. David Taylor getting a big win over Big Bubba Rogers. Alex Wright and Sting, a uh, good match for Sting there. And then the main event was Hogan and Bret Hart with Hogan going over. Uh, yeah, that's what they're up to. I mean, if you want to see CMLL, I'll just scroll through here slowly. But we are jumping into our hardcore TV shows today. It will be the next two shows. So we should, by the end of hardcore TV, 
there, the one I'm highlighting, will have the main events and the entire card booked for Hostile City Showdown. I believe at the moment it is just the TV title match between Taz and Jerry Lynn that's booked. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens for the rest of the show. But I'm going to stop waffling because I feel like this is a really long intro. And, uh, you know, I ain't about that. You ain't about that. So let's not waste any more time and dive straight into Hardcore TV. Okay, and here we are for our first Hardcore TV episode uh, yeah, episode of this episode. Um, and we kick off with Jerry Lynn and Koji Nakagawa from FMW. And Jerry Lynn is just here trying to build a little bit of momentum heading into that match against Taz at our pay-per-view at the end of this month. So Jerry Lynn gets a nice little win in a 16-minute match. So a nice lengthy little match to open the show with a nice little pop from Jerry Lynn. Um, you know, given a bonus to everyone else, Nakagawa not dropping in popularity anywhere, which is kind of nice to see. Although I feel like Nakagawa might have like no popularity in North America, so that might be why. I don't know, we'll see. But crowd reaction is 76, not too bad, to be fair. A three-star match, 77%, I'll take that, and a final score of 65. Just quickly before we move on to the rest of the show, you can see on the left-hand side we have got the question of the episode. Uh, so last episode was which modern day wrestler would be great in this 1998 ECW setting. I flip reversed it for this one. Don't worry, the questions will get more creative as we go forward. But this time, looking at our roster, who we've got, which one of these guys would you love to just pick up and drop in modern day wrestling? Whether it be New Japan, AEW, WWE, I don't know, if you want to, NWA, who? Huh? Uh, TNA, you know, DDT, whoever. Like, who do you think would be great? Which promotion and why? So I haven't actually thought about this. So I believe... I think Chris Candido was way ahead of his time. Uh, I think he's a baller. He had buckets of charisma, awesome physique. He could go in the ring. Really liked him. I think he'd do really well in a current day, like WWE setting. Um, you know, pair him up with someone fun, um, and that could be one hell of a tag team. Another person who, when watching all these old shows, that I was like, God, I really like him. Um, and I think New Japan would be a better setting for him, it would be John Cronus. I know that's such a random pick, but um, when he was with Perry Saturn in the Eliminators, you know, he's a big guy. You look at him, you don't think he can do what he can do, but then he does. He's kind of like um, uh, the Viking Raiders. Is that their name in WWE? It's kind of like them, you know, they're big guys, but they can move and they can hit hard. Um, the only trouble with Cronus is he hasn't got much of a personality, which is why I think New Japan works better. You know, he can just rely on what he does in the ring and then probably curse out a couple of people. Um, but I'd say those are my two picks, although there's so many. Like, the Dudley boys in modern day AEW, but like, when how old they are here would be amazing. Uh, like... You could list so many, like Rob Van Dam in any generation is incredible. The same with Sabu. Uh, Lance Storm, you know, a Lance Storm in like uh, Alpha Academy style thing. Yeah, Jerry Lynn as well. Like, there's so many, so many. But yeah, um, let me know in the comments section who you think, what promotion and why. Because, um, you know, I kind of love knowing the answers to these questions. So yeah. But either way, um, this first match done, out the way, let's move on. We've got a next match, and it is between Spike Dudley and Supernova. And this is super chaotic, hardcore style match. Uh, Spike Dudley did a lot of the heavy lifting, apparently, and got the win. Uh, he defeats Supernova in just shy of six minutes, um, which is you know really great from Spike. Unlucky Supernova, you will get your day soon. Crowd loved it. They ate this up because, of course, you know, the hardcore aspect. And I think Spike Dudley is pretty popular. Three-star quality, you know, because it's not going to be that great. Short match. Neither of these guys are, you know, incredible in the ring. Although Supernova is actually quite innovative. And Spike's just, you know, a daredevil. And a 75 overall. I'll take it. Nice one. But post-match, as Spike Dudley is celebrating his win, he is jumped. Uh, he finds himself under the merciless assault of the Dudley boys who have come through the crowd to beat up their recently exiled family member. Although suddenly, 
the arena erupts with the theme of New Jack. And you know, in New Jack style, that theme is just constantly playing in the background as New Jack charges down the aisle with a trolley full of weapons. Uh, he enters the ring swinging a barbed wire baseball bat, uh, instantly shifting that balance of, you know, Dudley boys against Spike to now Spike and New Jack against the Dudleys. Uh, New Jack and Spike Dudley, who are, you know, such a random team, um, just suddenly pick up the weapons, use them, unleash havoc upon the Dudley boys. You know, steel chairs colliding, bodies are going through tables that were previously set up in the match. Um, like a true, like, ECW extreme spectacle of just, you know, car crash TV. Um, and New Jack just providing that chaos that he always does. And still, the New Jack theme is just ongoing. Like, I've got that song drilled into my head, as I imagine many of you are who watched ECW back in the day. Uh, but yeah, everyone did really well in this segment. Everyone got a little popularity jump, which I like to see. A 76 from that first segment where the Dudleys are attacking Spike. And then New Jack coming in to kind of chase the Dudley boys away. Got an 81, which is, you know, both a lot higher than I thought it'd be. So, nice one. Looks like the Dudley boys aren't finished uh, defeating, not defeating, um, taking on Spike. But New Jack has come to the rescue. And post, post-match, I guess... Uh, Joey Styles is on commentary just to confirm that Paul Heyman has told him that at Hostile City Showdown we will see the Dudley boys taking on New Jack and his apparent current team member, uh, teammate, sorry, John Cronus. So we will get the Gangstaninators, Gangstaninators, yep, against the Dudley boys in what will be, I'm assuming, a crazy chaotic match. Um, so yeah, that should be good fun our second match i think confirmed for hostile city showdown i'm looking forward to it 63 from joey styles nice one my boy let's move on to our next match which i believe is our penultimate match of the night it is rhino taking on mikey whipwreck and of course in a ooh, not bad crowd reaction but the rest of it's a little bit subpar uh, rhino gets the win in a very short seven minute match um Rhino made to look like a threat, of course he is, you know, he's coming in as his dominant man beast uh, and gets the win against Mikey Whipwreck. Um, working with Paul Heyman helped, we had him as the agent and Mikey Whipwreck, you know, just being quite experienced, helped everyone in this segment. An 83% reaction from the crowd, a 2.5 star match quality and a 65% overall, you know, not terrible, I'll take it. Um, Post-match, Paul Heyman makes his way to the ring and this is a longish promo guys, so watch out. Uh, Paul Heyman grabs the microphone post-match to address the crowd. He says, look at him, folks. Rhino, a man that represents the relentless force that is ECW. The gore, the carnage, the unbridled fury from this man. He is the living, breathing essence of what we stand for. Just as Heyman is about to continue this, um, Tommy Dreamer's entrance music hits and the arena erupts. We haven't seen Tommy Dreamer yet in the series properly. Because uh, I don't think House Party counts. Um, he comes down to the crowd and he does not look happy. He grabs the mic and he says, Now hold on a damn minute, Paul. Rhino, the definition of extreme. I've been bleeding for this company since day one. And you're going to call him, who's been here, what, two weeks? The definition of extreme? Tommy Dreamer gets into the ring. Faces up to Rhino, you know, nose to nose, um, who he's labelling the new kid. And he says, yo, if you want to talk extreme and prove poorly right, let's settle this in the ring. One on one, man to man. And I'll show you, Rhino, what extreme truly means. Paul, Hostile City Showdown, make it happen. I'll see you then. And he kind of pushes the mic into Rhino's chest and leaves with, you know, Beulah in hand. Uh, Rhino's just smirking and nodding, you know, as a way to accept the challenge. Um, and the match is official. Paul Heyman nods to make it official. And Joey Styles puts it over on commentary that we will get Rhino versus Tommy Dreamer at Hostile City Showdown. And yeah, decent little segment here. It kind of makes sense to have Paul Heyman cut a promo because Paul Heyman's gold. And we'll take that. Um, but yeah, nice little uh, bit here. Everyone grew in popularity. I think promos are the way forward. Everyone grows in promo. So yeah, we're going to be promo heavy or promo heavy-ish. 
so that is another match confirmed for Hostile City Showdown. I think we've got a couple more to confirm and then the card is set. But moving on from this, it is now our main event and it is the, you know, team, you could use that in very loose quotation marks, of Lance Storm and Chris Candido as they have got a title match uh, in the main event. So just before the match, we can see Chris Candido comes out first, uh, Sonny in one arm and the ECW Tag Team Championship on the other. He is exuding confidence and gesturing to the crowd as they jeer and boo him. But his entrance is cut short as Lance Storm's music hits and the stoic and composed partner of Candido makes his way to the ring. As they both enter through the ropes, um, there's a heated exchange of words between the two of them as they're bickering over who is starting the match. Candido eventually gives in, heading to the corner, allowing Storm to be the first to take on the team of the Can-Am Express. So Doug Furness begins in this match as well. And this is our main event. Chris Candido and Lance Storm looking to defend their ECW tag team titles against the Can-Am Express. So let's dive straight into this main event match. And in a, ooh, not too bad, uh, but the final score kind of dipped a little bit. Um, Chris Candido and Lance Storm do get the win, but just a little bit of background information on what happens here. Uh, the final moments of this fast-paced 12-minute match uh, Lance Storm is building all this momentum and hits Phil Lafon with a devastating last call. As he crawls over to get the pin, Candido comes crashing in and boots Lance Storm in the side of the head, claiming the pinfall for himself. Post-match, the tag champions begin to exchange blows and start beating each other up as they drag each other out to the back, continuing their beef, but still our tag team champions. There's a lot of green here. Uh, Lance Storm boosting everyone, Candido boosting everyone, Lance Storm great in tag team matches, Harley Race put, doing some really good agent work, you can see still the champions um, and Lance Storm helped everyone in this segment. Also, Doug Furness kicked up a stink for losing this match, he was like, I don't want to lose this match, I'm not happy about that, I was like, bro, it doesn't matter, you're losing, so he's probably, his morale is probably a little bit lower than usual, but uh, yeah, Lance Storm and Chris Candido retain um, not through teamwork, but just through sheer quality, I assume. An 82 from the crowd, you know, they, they kind of like that. That's pretty good. Three and a half stars, 78% match quality with a final score of 68. And that is how we end our first ECW show of this episode. Let's take a quick look at how we did. So we would have scored a 70 if we had better uh, products and stuff like that. But uh, 55, I'll take that. And weirdly enough... The highest rated match of the night was Spike Dudley and Supernova. Who'd have thunk it? I mean, to be fair, that's the only one that had a hardcore stipulation. The rest of these were just simple, straightforward matches. But out of this show, we have got two matches confirmed for Hostile City Showdown. It, it will be the Dudley Boys taking on the Gang Stanonators. And we also have, um, here we go, we've got Rhino taking on Tommy Dreamer. Tommy Dreamer, a little bit peeved that Heyman thinks Rhino is the definition of ECW and Tommy Dreamer feels that, you know, he's done more than enough to warrant that title. So yeah, let's end this show and dive straight into the next one. Um, I'm going to jump back to the office. Actually, let's just jump back now. There might be some news. Why not? This game loads a lot quicker than TW. So we got one mail, which I'm assuming... Oh, we have a, an owner, a new owner of ECW. Naoki Su Sugabayashi. Oh, is that because we sacked Thingy, Todd Gordon? Hold on. Nay Naoki, Naoki, Naoki. Yeah. Is he on a PPA? Oh, he's on a written contract. Creative control and hiring veto. What? Oh, no. What have I done? What have I done? Oh, no. Release. Uh, you must pay them three months' salary. Hold on. Let's renegotiate. PPA, I don't want that, I don't want that, make offer, accepted, Wee. okay, cool, done, so yeah, he's not, um, he hasn't got creative control anymore, or hiring, because that would have, you know, royally screwed us over, I reckon, so I guess we kind of just have to have someone as an owner, wait, can we renegotiate with zero money, oh no, we can't, okay, so at least we're paying him on a paper appearance, but he's not going to ever appear. So 
Our new owner, guys, Naoki Sugabayashi. Don't know anything about this guy. Um, but yeah, cool. Well, um, I'm going to progress all the way through to this one. If any news items pop up, I'll jump back in and let you know. But other than that, I'll see you guys at Hardcore TV. Okay, there was no new news at all. It was just a nice, simple, straightforward week. Uh, the only news was obviously the hiring of our new owner. So welcome, I guess. Uh, but we are here for our final ECW show before Hostile City Showdown. And we open with some real fun singles action between Two Cold Scorpio and Seema? Chima? I'll, I'll get it right eventually. I'll look it up after this episode because I kind of hate questioning myself. And I'm sure those of you watching that know how it's pronounced are punching your screen. Uh, you know, in frustration. But yeah, a uh, nice little opening match. Nine minute match. Uh, Two Cold Scorpio gets the win. Uh, 72 crowd reaction. A 72 match quality. So 72 across the board. Uh, but then a 61 overall. Of course, it kind of gets dipped down a little bit based on, um, you know, all of our product stuff. Uh, but yeah, nice little opening match. And post match, we just get a nice little moment between the two. Uh, despite his loss, uh, I'm just going to say Seema. Seema shows respect for Two Cold Scorpio uh, with a handshake. The two then pose together in the ring as the fans show their appreciation for you know a pretty fun opening bout. Uh, but following on from this though, we stay in the ring where we've got Al Snow taking on Devon Storm. And in another fairly decent match, the crowd seemed to really eat this one up with an 80. Uh, but the match quality itself wasn't as good. Uh, Al Snow gets the win with a 63 overall. Uh, had a boost in performance because everyone loves Al Snow's gimmick. Uh, Harley Race did a lot of heavy lifting apparently in this match. And uh, working with Al Snow just helps everyone. I think these working with comments I'm just going to stop mentioning. I'll mostly just look at these boost in performance and stuff. Uh, but Al Snow's gone up in pop. He got a point four. Wow, that's a big jump. Normally we're only seeing point twos. Uh, but after this match, though, we are heading backstage where Shane Douglas is uh, planning to respond to Taz. And Shane Douglas says, Taz, last week you thought you could play with fire and threaten the franchise and leave your mark using a cardboard cutout. But this ain't child's play, Taz. This is ECW, where things get settled in the ring. So you can set all the cardboards ablaze, but when the smoke clears, it's going to be your own career that's in the ashes. And that starts at Hostile City Showdown. So we've got Shane Douglas here possibly teasing that he's going to do something to um, Taz um, at Hostile City Showdown to affect his um, his title match. But yeah, he says that the the own career, his own career, I'm jumping over my words here, is going to be in the ashes. And that starts at Hostile City Showdown. So yeah, very um, interesting. Uh, 75 here, Shane Douglas is fairly decent on the mic. Uh, Francine was there. There were a few offended by this, apparently. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, but it improved the crowd reaction, so I'll take that. And the good looks of Francine always helps. So, you know, Francine is a, a very beautiful woman, as are all the women on our roster, to be honest. I mean, Chastity's okay. <laughs> but, yeah, I wish there was more women in this database, because um, I'd love to bring a few more in. But I imagine as we progress in the years, I know there's a load that are set to debut, so we'll just keep an eye on that. Now we stay backstage now, where the FBI are doing their best to try and recruit a new member to the full-blooded Italians. And uh, is it going to move? There we go. Here we are. Uh, so backstage, we've got the FBI, Joey Styles and Joey Munoz, who, you know, is the new kid on the block, the, the new hotshot. Um, and Joey Munoz is backstage, you know, just mind his own business when the full-blooded Italians approach him. Lil Guido comes up to him and says, Hey, Paisan, we've been watching you, heard good things, and we think you've got the Italian blood. So how about you join the FBI? We could use someone young and fresh like you. Joey Munoz kind of looks him up and down, smirks, not buying into their assumption, and says, You guys got it all wrong. I'm not Italian. I'm a full-blooded American, and I'm proud to be that. Guido then looks a little bit offended by that statement, but tries to keep his cool. And he says, American, Puerto Rican, Italian, what's the difference? We're all part of the family, so what do you say? Munoz then kind of chuckles to himself and says, family? You guys ain't no family. 
you wouldn't know family if it hit you with a steel chair. Now head back to your pizzeria, Guido. And he kind of just like brushes Guido's arm a little bit, which, you know, pisses off little Guido and sends him into a bit of a rage, attempting to dive at Munoz. But Tommy Rich and Tracy Smothers are there to kind of hold Guido in like midair as he kind of kicks and scrapes his way um, forward. Um, and Tommy Rich tries to calm down the whole situation, just being like, easy Guido, easy, let it go. We don't need no backstage trouble. Smothers then nods in agreement and says, yeah, save it for the ring, fellas. Munoz, you might have just signed up for more than you bargained for. Uh, the tension then lingers as the FBI walk away. Guido shooting Munoz a heated glare over his shoulder, saying, I'm going to get you. As Joey Styles on commentary says, whoa, heated exchange there between FBI and Joey Munoz. And um, it's not going to end there because Heyman has just confirmed that Lil Guido and Joey Munoz will face each other one-on-one -on -one at Hostile City Showdown. So that is another match that we have at Hostile City Showdown. It'll be Joey Munoz's first ever ECW pay-per-view match um, as he takes on Lil Guido of the FBI. And here, you know, not the best ratings. I'm assuming uh, Guido doesn't really have um, much skill <laughs> for promos. Um, but Joey Munoz has got some really good star power, apparently. Uh, but yeah, everyone went up in pop. We'll take that. Joey Styles is going to be the most popular man in the world if he carries on like this. Uh, but yeah, you know, not too bad. A 46. You know, we might have to play around with these because I think that these guys, especially Tommy Rich and Guido, I think they're really entertaining. So I might have to toy around with their entertainment skills. Uh, but moving on, we've got another backstage promo before we head to the ring for our main event. Yeah, main event already. Um, and it is John Cronus and New Jack, a.k.a. the Gang Stanonators, as they hype up their match with the Dudley Boys at Hostile City Showdown. And John Cronus says, Dudley Boys, you think you're the kings of the ECW block? Well, me and New Jack have got something to say about that at Hostile City Showdown. We're not just going to wrestle you. We're going to ed educate you on respect. New Jack then chimes in and says, You see, we don't stand for bullies. And what you've done to Spike... That's straight up sick. Shit, it makes my blood boil. But guess what? Hostile City Showdown, that's where it's all gonna change. Spike, we got your back, little man. And Dudley boys, get ready for a beatdown you won't forget. You ain't gonna be in Dudleyville come Saturday. You're gonna be in the gang Stanonator territory. As they kind of both, you know, look menacingly at the camera as it fades to black and heads back to the ring. So yeah, nice little promo here. I guess. For some reason, Bubba Ray lost popularity. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, Cronus and New Jack seem to very much be in Spike's corner um, when it comes to this match. And Spike, not even in the match. These guys are fighting for him. How cute. <laughs> um, but that should be a super exciting match going into the main event. Yes, main event. And it is a tag team match between the hardcore chair-swinging freaks of Axel Rotten and Balls Mahoney as they take on probably the best tag team on paper uh, that we've got in ECW, Rob Van Dam and Sabu. And in a fairly decent uh, main event match, we've got a lot of things to comment on here. Um, it is Rob Van Dam and Sabu that get the win. So let's just go through this. So Boost Informs comes a gimmick. Harley Race did really well to help with everyone in this. Um, Axel Rotten was struggling for breath by the end of this 12 minute match. Jesus Christ. Um, great in tag team matches. Um, Balls Mahoney again, tired, um, but great in tag teams. Rob Van Dam, great gimmick. Star power, great gimmick. Van Dam's explosive style impressed the crowd, as did Sabu's. Uh, Rotten and Balls have got great chemistry. Harley Race did a lot of heavy lifting for the match story. Only Rob Van Dam uh, grew in popularity in this, and he was made to look like a threat, so it really helped his popularity, but no one else grew massively 95 from the crowd love that three star 73 match quality and a 72 overall i will take that and post match from this main event rob van dan sabu and their manager bill alfonso take to the mic as bill alfonso sets a challenge to fmw's best he holds up the he holds up his hands to his boys that just won the match blowing his whistle non fucking stop he then grabs the mic and sets a challenge. He goes, listen up. Bill Alfonso's got something to say and you better pay attention. 
Hostile City Showdown is right around the corner and we got the most extreme, the most outrageous and the most incredible tag team in history of professional wrestling, Rob Van Dam and Sabu. He then blows his whistle, gestures to the boys, the crowd, you know, they cheer because, you know, they love a bit of RVD and Sabu. Now you think you've seen it all? Well, I guarantee you have not. And you know what? I got a challenge for all those FMW boys that keep popping up on our show and giving us the best that they got. So bring it on. Bring your toughest. Bring your meanest. Bring your baddest. Because I guarantee you they're not good. They're going to step into the ring with the Rob Van Dam and Sabu and they're going to get a taste of extreme like they've never had before. FMW thinks they can hang with the big boys in ECW? Well, now here is your chance. Hostile City Showdown, RVD, Sabu, they're going to tear through anyone who dares to step up. So bring your A-game, bring your weapons, and get ready for the beatdown of a lifetime. Because in ECW, we don't just push the envelope, we tear it wide open. Now, can you handle that? As he continues to blow his whistle as the show goes off air. So Rob Van Dam and Sabu have set a challenge to FMW's best in a tag team bout who is going to appear we're going to have to wait and see who turns up at hostile city showdown which is the next episode so yeah everyone growing in pop here in 88 bill alfonso is great at cutting promos um and i try my best with these promos that i write to try and get the essence of them of course being you know with my british accent it can be quite hard to convey their character but uh, i hope the words come across but yeah, let's end the show and see how we did. So we would have got a 68, but we got a 55. So as long as we're maxing out what we can get for now, um, I think we need to watch our popularity. Once we get to about 50, or once our money is like big, I think we can then jump this up um, as in our product spending. And then hopefully the bigger gap, the more popularity we gain. Uh, but yeah, here's just a quick overview. I'll just slowly scroll through. And it looks like our card is finalized for Hostile City Showdown. So we've got the RVD and Sabu FMW Challenge. We have got the Gang Stanonators taking on the Dudley Boys. We have got Lil Guido taking on Joey Munoz. We have also got Rhino taking on Tommy Dreamer. And then I believe the final match and the main event is Taz and his television title taking on Jerry Lynn. And there we go. I believe that is the entire um card if not it'll be in the description of the next episode uh but yeah that's it for this one guys i uh, really hope you enjoyed it um actually let me just quickly jump back you never know there might be some news for something but we've got two male news <coughs> what is this um <coughs> sorry about the cough guys uh i've been admiring the work of devon and i'd love to work with them i would like a match with devon before the 28th of february so that's before the next pay-per-view. I'm sure we can do that. Devon's Devon Storm, right? Uh, da, 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 da. Devon Storm. So he wants a match against Devon Storm? Yeah, we can do that, of course. Sure. Um, reply. Um, accept. Cool. So we'll make sure that New Jack versus Devon Storm happens. I mean, I'll just throw it on one of these, let's be honest. Um... And yeah, so yeah, let's end the show there. You know, New Jack has, we've made New Jack happy. So what better way to end the show? So yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like, comment, subscribe, share. Remember, question of the day, make sure you answer it because, you know, I love interacting with you guys. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you all in the next one.